Kirby is here. Stephanie Smith is here. She's going to have to duck out a little early. Emery Richardson is here. Um, thank you for the binder. Barb's here and Ariane. Am I pronouncing your name right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I got an email or text from John Adams uh, saying he couldn't make it last minute. So, so this is it. Which we do technically have a quorum. There, there are, is a quorum. Yes, yes. There I is get, a quorum. Yeah. I get to vote at that point. Yeah. I always discount myself, so I, <laughs> I forget that I count. To add yourself yes. back. Yeah. Great. So. All right, well, if, if we're ready, we'll call the meeting to order, okay? So, everyone, direct everyone's attention to the agenda. Um, so, I would like to adjust the agenda because we have absence of several people and in the interest of focusing our, our attention tonight on finishing up the zoning, re the kind of like the fixes, quote unquote fixes to our zoning, um, going through that matrix. I would like to table the um, the city plan kickoff item. That's item eight until the next meeting. And with that being tabled, I think we can uh, conclude tonight's meeting at six thirty. So, assuming we don't have any big issues that pop up, and really, I I have a. a great deal of interest in making sure that Mike can leave as soon as possible since he's he is ill and he's calling in nevertheless so um, and Stephanie needs to leave so if, if anyone has any objection to that you know we can change it but okay any other modifications to the agenda have we not yet dis considered the December 10th minutes or was this a correction on the 10th they minutes? needed to be corrected okay yeah yeah, I think there was some confusion about who went, made what motion. It was about, there was two different motions. items that were clumped together. There should yeah. have been separate motions. So I think Mike was going to uh, modify that, and that's why they popped back up on the agenda. So, um, okay. Uh, well, we'll deem the agenda with the tabling of item 8 as um, approved by consensus. Okay, so item... Well, that's item two. So item three, annual election of chair and vice chair. So this is something that we're required to do every Jan January every year. Um, like I said at the last meeting, Kirby and I are happy to continue serving, but we certainly don't need to. Nobody else has approached me. <laughs> um, so, and I, th I think there's a lot of roles for people even without an official title, but if anyone does want something, then you should let me know. Um, but hearing none, do I have any any nominations? Do I have to make nominations? Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do I have seconds for the nomination? A second. Okay. Any discussion about this? It'd be kind of awkward now. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. And the, the motion carries. The motion to nominate. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Another year. We'll see, you know, as things progress, we can, you know, reevaluate next year whether we want to continue or if we want to change it up. So I might not mind stepping down after this year. I'm surprised but, you're going to continue now, Leslie. <laughs> well, I, I mean, with the amount of new planning commissioners we've had come on, it, it seemed to make sense uh -huh. that. We would continue yeah, leadership, but yeah. A lot for you to take on. Uh, yes, I'm very, but Kirby has... We've, we've talked about maybe I, I could lead some meetings here and there just to like kind of ease the burden on Leslie. You know, so we, we could expect that. Yes, and I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so number four is comments from the chair. I don't want to spend too much time talking about comments, but I, I do just want to recognize that you know, I am receiving emails with people interested in providing input on the city plan, and I know everybody here is champing at the bit to get going on that, so I'm looking for us to start delving into that starting at the next meeting and to spend the bulk of our time working on that, and the first part of that process will be 
sort of big picture thinking, which will be fun and overwhelming at once, but we'll, we'll, be, we'll be able to do it. Um, so I'll, I'll go over some more detailed ideas about that at the next meeting. Um, so for now, that's all I have, unless anyone else has any random. Let's see, is it possible that Dan Jones might be coming in at the next meeting? Well, I'll see if he's available. I don't know. It's pretty last he, minute. So. Yeah, I don't know we'll if see. everyone knew that he offered to present the Bridges competition winner. It seems like a great place to start. Yeah, it's a very, definitely an overview that would be yep. useful. Yeah, so and, and I asked be... them to distribute the information to the planning commission directly, mm -hmm. not just make everybody go on the site and read it. So hopefully yeah. they'll have a hard copy available. Great. Great. Thank you, Barb. Okay, so general business is item five, which is when we invite members from the public to come up and present comments about items that aren't on the agenda, but there's no member of the public present. So we'll move on to item six, which is our um, punch list of zoning fixes. And I understand from Mike we have one item that's highlighted in yellow that we have not voted on and we need to discuss. And then the remaining items... Um, will be deemed approved by uh, consent unless somebody brings up an issue they want to discuss. So what I propose we do is we start with item four, have Mike walk us through the issue, and then um, I'd like to hear if anyone has any specific items they want to talk about in here. And Stephanie, if you need to step I'll, out. I'll I... stay for this first part. Okay, okay. I have five, six minutes, okay. So, Mike, can you walk us through um, number four, the decision that needs to be made? Okay, and let me know if you can't hear me. Um, You're loud and clear. Okay. Uh, so, number four uh, was just an issue that had come up on an application where somebody wanted to pave a path that already existed. It was a gravel path, and they thought it would be easier to, to maintain going forward if they paved it. So they were going to pave, rather than having a you know a gravel four-foot path, it was going to be a paved four-foot path. And it wasn't clear whether or not they would need a zoning permit to do that. Um, it really comes down to that opening part in Section 1004 in the definition of development. Is paving or repaving um, require, does that require a zoning permit? Um, I, I, clearly, I think repaving isn't because I think that's just maintenance. But if it's gravel and it's being converted, I can see it both ways. Um, arguing one way, um, people sometimes make informal parking areas that they may then decide they want to pave, and it never received a permit, and therefore having them come in to pave that area we might point out the fact that they never actually had permission to put in that informal parking space that they had put there. So that would be an argument to go and say, yeah, we probably should regulate it. In another sense, though, you know, it could be argued that there really is no need to. Um, it's still technically an impervious surface if it's gravel. It's still impervious if it's paved. It's really just a change of material on the surface, and I don't know. You know, I could argue it both ways. Um, I would, you know, if I was pushed to lean one way, I would probably lean towards regulating it. But it, I have no real big issue. I just, we just needed to have an answer. Is it possible to differentiate between parking and pathways, or does that make it too complicated? Like, if it's a gravel pathway, they can pave it without a permit. But if it's parking, they need to get a permit. Um. The, the pathways can work the same way, though. They could be rather informal, you know, right. finding where people are walking and then deciding you're going to pave where the walking path is. You know, is that really something that has, it's never been approved, it's just where we see the walked path. Um, but we certainly could differentiate. We were just looking for something, you know, that's kind of clean that says yes or no. Yeah, that makes it messier, just a, just a <laughs> thought. <laughs> well, I'm inclined to uh, the same as Mike, where, I mean, I, I 
not too worked up over the issue, but I do think that regulating and tracking impervious services that are popping up is a pretty good policy goal. Um, and so, I mean, I tend to not not want to see overregulation, but I think this is one that's important enough, and with water quality issues and things um, being on everyone's minds, I think keeping track of impervious services makes it all that more uh, important to do. I would agree with that. And uh, the other point to make is that gravel is a variable surface, even though it, they call it impermeable, but it really does drainage patterns change over time after freezing and thawing. So whereas pavement is pretty much set. And so if somebody then paves over a gravel surface and drains onto a neighbor's property, we better know about it. So I think it would be better just to be able to have some kind of overview. So what exactly is the proposal? I'm sorry if I missed it, but I, I maybe I have an old. Uh, so the the recommendation is. Okay, that's uh, the same. Yeah. To just say, to state that you wouldn't re require a permit for the paving, repaving of already impervious surfaces, but to. This pops up would. under, so I mean in the exemption section of the zoning, it says that um, certain types of development are exempt. And I think for some reason this gets pulled in through the definition section. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, yeah. so we, we voted in a different place on the matrix to remove the, the little I that exists at the bottom of page 1-1, which gives the definition of land development, and instead mm -hmm. actually put the definition of land development in 1004. Uh -huh. So what I would end up doing is just inserting it on one of those lines. And I'm actually, I had a draft strikeout copy that I've been, as we've been making changes, I've been updating. So I'm just going to read it out loud for people who don't have a copy immediately in front of them. So um, in one, on page 1-1, one one, there's this, <coughs> this little I and this sentence in italics that says land development means constructing, installing, demolishing, constructing, converting, structurally altering, relocating or enlarging any structure, mining, excavating, filling or grading land, removing natural woody vegetation from within riparian buffers, changing or extending the use of land or a structure, adjusting or relocating the boundary between two lots or dividing a lot into two or more lots. So this one, this issue seems to come under um, converting, reconstructing, structurally altering. Is that right? Yeah, so it's just, just getting there. Ah, another this one. Booger. Okay. Um. Was the idea to strike I all together and then put the definition. I'm not clear here. on that yet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to get, if, if I have one second, I'm just looking up, look up a different way to get there here. Sure. Update. No, don't fix this. Because <coughs> it's also mentioned in 5101L2 as the definition. Development? Yeah, land mm -hmm. development. Land development. Yeah, and then if we changed it, it could get changed in one location and not in the other. Well, the word land development is used throughout the applicability section, yeah. so. It makes sense to just have it clear mm -hmm. as part. Because these informational notes are really not part of the ordinance, are they? Well, other than references. Yeah, so the, the I wasn't. So we removed that one. And what I put in was, and, and I can get you the strikeout copy as soon as we're done today. So in, in my draft notes I put together, I have a 1004 point B that says development includes, one, the reconstruction, the construction, reconstruction, conversion, structural alteration, relocation, enlargement, or demolition of any building. Two, any earthwork, including mining, excavation, filling, grading of land. Three, the paving of unpaved surfaces. Four, any change of use of land or structure thereof. And five, oh. the subdivision of land, which includes blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's what we had here, except broken into 
subparts. It's actually written in the regs now yep. with specific provisions for each of those types of development that are listed off with semicolons in between them here. Correct. And then you've clarified the paving to to be part of that. Yeah, it's its own, even though you arguably could be interpreted as one of these issues, one of these types of development, you've now create, created its own provision so it's abundantly clear. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I, I went for the abundantly clear perspective. I, I'm i okay with that proposal. Well, what Mike, what would, others? Would you remove the definition then from 5101L? Uh, the paving definition? No, the land development definition? Uh, yes, I would reference in the end because just so everybody knows, there's a, a, you know, a rule of thumb for writing regulations that says say it once. You right. never say something twice because you'll always get it different. So what I would probably have in the definition section is uh, a, a, a thing that says you know, de land development C1004.B. Yeah. Okay. Not everything that was in 5101L2 was in the definition that you just read to us. Um, so we have a couple of other issues that are here, like the adjustment or relocation of the boundary between two lots or the division of a lot into two or more lots. Yeah, Does that was in my subdivision blah, blah, blah. Oh, subdivision blah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. <laughs> just as long as we don't lose it. No, no. It definitely had to be in there. <clears throat> So by saying paving of unpaved surfaces, you're exempting something like a gravel path that would be paved. Am I understanding that right? Not no. 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 So we're not exempting. Not exempting it. So you would need to get a permit for the paving of a gravel path. Okay. So it's kind of as development, right? That's so so okay. the, the first time, is the, the intention is to require a permit the first time you pave, but if oh, you have okay. to repave, then you would not need a permit. Okay. Then it yes, becomes it's already paved, then it's considered maintenance. Is that acceptable yeah. yep. to everyone? Sure. Okay, Mike, we're going with your recommendation. Okay. Consensus. Okay, here we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay. We'll see you at the next meeting, which will be... To the oh, that calendar doesn't show me. I'm just going to look so that it's... February 11th okay. and yep. 25th. Okay. See you then. I don't think one of those is a holiday. No, I don't think so either. Um, okay. So then I think we wanted to revisit number 125 as well. I don't think we voted on that. Correct. That was the only other yellow one that was open. Okay. What about 62, Mike? That's still open, but did oh. we just decide not to act on it? Yeah, we decided to hold off on that until after we have more of the city plan work underway and we understand whether that's going to fit within it. It's sort of an idea that we we thought we'd consider as part of the city plan. That's the the, the question was, whether we'd have just sort of a generic PUD to add to all the other PUDs, and we decided let's let's work on our city plan and see whether that's something that we decide is necessary at that point. But let's hold off on it for now. So that was 62. So 125. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So 125 was John Adams' suggestion that perhaps. Yeah. Uh, under state law, single and two family structures are exempt from site plan. And John had suggested maybe expanding the exemption to include three and four unit residential units as well uh, as a way of, I think, uh, speaking for him because he's not there, I think his thought was that um, the, less, the less of these rules that are in place then it might encourage more of these three and four unit apartment buildings to happen. Right, and then we got kind of caught in the question of what accessory buildings would mean, so. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I think 
my thought is we have now administrative site plans so in a lot of cases these you know the 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 quote burden of going through site plan um, isn't always a hearing and I think if somebody were building a brand new four unit residential on a vacant lot we probably would want to see a site plan so my thought is I would probably lean towards saying no at this time it's always one you can always add an exemption in later it's generally harder to take exemptions away from people um, so my thought would be I would probably have three and four units still go through site plan. They'll probably usually fall into minor site plans, not major site plans. Um, major site plans, you need to have 10 parking spaces. It would be really difficult to see a four unit building with a 10 parking space. Um, you know, you need to build over a certain size. So I, I think for the most part, they're going to be minor site plans unless you're building a brand new building. And in which case, I think those are ones we would want to have a hearing on, uh, a brand new four unit building. That would be my sense. Yeah, I agree, Mike. Um, as long as it comes out as a minor site plan, um, it seems like the number of sections that re that uh, are pertain to minor site plan are reasonable to ask for a new four unit building. Mike, if someone is, is modifying an existing, say, an existing Victorian to make it, to turn it from one unit into four, would you say that it's always an administrative site plan review? Uh, let me go real quick. That's a change of use. To go to, from one to four. Yeah, I'm just trying to zoom down to the part where we have faster at this one Got the track bar um, because it's conditional in some where in some the districts. requirements are for items that need almost there three and four dwelling units are conditional in some zones some districts yeah, those those would automatically have a hearing anyways What are you looking for? All right, um, so section 3201, if people are, want to look that up, that has where what needs a major site plan and what needs a minor site plan. Uh, major site plans have the hearings, minor site plans are administrative. So the following are major site plans, construction of new principal buildings, major renovations of existing principal buildings, and we have a definition of major renovations, which means the building pretty much can't be occupied. It's one of these full gut remodels um, that, um, so like French block would be a major renovation. That's what you know, I was gonna ask. Five million dollars in. The construction of 10 or new parking spaces or 2,000 square feet of impervious surface, the construction of accessory structures with a footprint more than 2,000 square feet, construction of an addition of more than 2,000 square feet to an existing building um, are the requirements. So, uh, as I said, it probably, there's no guarantee that somebody won't, if they went from one, a Victorian with one to a Victorian with four, they'll probably be minor. But if they trip one of these other ones, they have 10 parking spaces, um, they're constructing a accessory structure with 2,000 square feet. If there's something else in there that triggers it, they may end up in major site plan anyways. Just, yeah, major renovations, that term is used there seems kind of vague to me. Mm. It's, it it's has a definition. definition, and we think it's got enough that we can make a, a, a pretty solid determination administratively, and if somebody disagrees with us, they can take it to the, to the DRB. But we think we've got a pretty good definition of major renovations. Um, Page five dash one two. It is a little vague. We'll, we'll give we'll give you that, but it is we we felt we had enough there to be able to make a clear distinction. 
Yeah, you I know, think the building that... can't be habitated. So it, it, you can't, you know, if you're if you're working and people are still living there, and it's not to the point that there's no heating, there's no ventilation, the windows, you know, it's it's it, major renovation is really just it's really that it's a major renovation. So it seems like one of its distinguishing characteristics is alteration to the exterior shell of the building. Yes. So putting in a bunch of walls, <clears throat> you're saying wouldn't quite wouldn't quite get you there. But if you're going to put in a bunch of walls and you and, can't and occupy like three the building, kitchens. <laughs> you know, if you can't occupy the building for its original intent, you mm -hmm. know, if the if it's a single family home and the people are living there, I suppose you could argue that it's not a major renovation, but. Well, I personally am really interested in pursuing this more. I mean, I don't feel like I'm well versed enough in the zoning to know all the potential scenarios, but I also feel like it would be really helpful to have John here to discuss it. Can we put this off or do we need to, I mean, I know we've been like yeah. slow on the. One thing I'm thinking about with this item is this is another great item to take up in the context of the city plan where we have some ideas of adjustments, tweaks we could make to the zoning in order to work towards certain goals, like in increasing housing stock, for yeah. instance. So this could be a great item to hold off on for now and, and discuss again once we're in that, that discussion. So we can bring tweaks to the zoning to the city council at any time? We for can at any yeah. time, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, it's and whatever vote you make tonight, this will just um, make, will, it'll let me finish making the strikeout copy, and then we can warn a public hearing, and we still have opportunity to make chances later. So if, if John shows up to the public hearing, he has the opportunity to go and say, I still want us to revisit this and, and, and have that discussion. It, there's nothing that's permanent at this point. Um, we'll, we're just going to make a copy that we say this is our copy we're going to go to public hearing with and as you all remember or many of you who were at, on the last one remember we made a bunch of changes after the public hearings and so we may make a few more tweaks after our public hearing before we send it to city council and they may make some tweaks afterwards as well yeah i mean i'm, I'm definitely interested in this change as well but i don't want to do it without talking through all of the potential consequences and I have a feeling Stephanie would probably be interested too. So I think I think there's good reason to bring it up later. Just hold off for now. Okay. One point I just want to make in reviewing this that the section 3207 design and compatibility would not pertain to this if um, if it was not a major site plan review. Mm -hmm. So um, and we're putting a lot of eggs in that basket to make sure that it's consistent with the neighborhood. There might be some other tweaks we want to make this area while we're at it too. I mean, it seems yeah. like <clears throat> part of the concept here is the city is invested in the exterior <coughs> we're doing there, but things that are in that are mostly internal like we're talking about where you're just increasing the number of units in, in the place. Yeah, they'd have to get a building permit though, and they'd have to put sprinklers yeah. in. So just, yeah. at that at that scale, they'd have to put sprinklers in. I they think. would, yeah. I'm just talking, but I'm, I'm thinking, I'm just just thinking out loud about yeah, if we work on this later. Thinking about that, the focus on the exterior as opposed to regulating the interior as much. It's not as much of our business. I'm, I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing to change an existing building versus construction constructing mm -hmm. a new four unit building. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a different, potentially different set of criteria that we're going to be concerned about. So, I would, yeah, I wouldn't want to get rid of it right now. But so, what you're suggesting, Leslie, is that we don't change it now, but potentially change it later. Look at it with the. Yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, it's. We're going to have a lot of opportunity to make recommendations as part of the city plan about changes that should be done, and then we could. I mean, if we decide this makes a lot of sense, we could, after we are done with the city plan, we could just take it up immediately and check something off the city plan mm -hmm. checklist. Okay. Everyone good with that approach? Okay. So the 
numbers 56 through 130 are the consent items. Does anybody have any specific points they want to discuss? Barb. I'm guessing Barb will. 56 through 130? Yes. Sorry, can you remind me, did we already do one through 55 except for the number four? Okay. Yep. I know, it's, it's sort of hard every two weeks to get in and out yeah. of the mindset. Yeah. Um, and find the right matrix. The right matrix is dated December 28th, 2018, I believe. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. At least we're looking off the same copy. Um, so under 84, we are going to add a definition of change of use, correct? Okay. So, Mike, Barb's directing us to number 84. Yes. Add a definition of change of use. Do we have that definition now? I do, but it's probably down in my office. Okay. So could we maybe see that next time? I mean, we can certainly, we need to add a definition. Yes. I just want to see the wording, that's all. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. And but maybe not a problem uh, with 111. Some conflict exists between 3505 lot arrangement and 390009 stormwater. Yes, this was a decision we made, but we can revisit it. Oh, I didn't have that as, uh, as approved. Yep. Uh, PC okay. agrees to delete 3505.A7 was the decision at the time. Which number are we on? 111. 111, okay, 11. yeah. <coughs> yeah, I have delete number seven of 3505 <coughs> written down. Under, which, <coughs> under the third column? Never mind. Yeah, so on 111, it's my own note. Oh, your note, okay. It's my right. own. Yeah, I wasn't seeing any notes under actions, Mike, so that's why I wasn't sure what we had decided to do. Mm -hmm. uh. Okay. Um, um, just one other quick question on 127 on the campus PUD and permits. Yep. I recommend striking the last sentence. Um, it seemed from reading it that after five, the intent was that after five years the approval would expire. But you said there seemed to be some confusion with that. Is that, was that not your interpretation? Um. That was. Last sentence is confusing, does not apply. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to it here. 3406 M1. Uh, so 1 right yeah so uh, permits and amendments to the campus master plan unless otherwise noted individual permits for development consistent with the master plan shall be administrative applications for development not consistent with the approved campus master plan shall require an amendment to the master plan <laughs> in point L Number one, approved campus master plans shall not expire. Proposed developments requiring major site plan approval shall occur within five years or such approval shall expire. This provision shall not apply to the shared <coughs> plan or signed plan. So I think 
my confusion, let me reread my note on 127. <clears throat> So if a, a development is going in for major site plan approval and has gotten it, they need to actually do the development within five years. Mm -hmm. It's not actually addressing anything regarding the master plan of camp campus. Yeah, I think my confusion is on the last sentence. My notes in the matrix mm -hmm. probably weren't as clear as they could have been. This provision shall not apply to the shared parking or sign plan. Yeah. And I think this provision the question is, what is what is this provision? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it the, the... Which of the two above it? Yeah, there's talking about a couple of things above it, and then it says, this provision shall not apply to the shared parking plan or the sign plan. And we're like, I'm not sure what you mean, but I think if we strike the sentence, if, if a parking plan results in a major site plan, then it's got a five-year expiration. Right. So a just, shared parking plan is a minor site plan, and it doesn't have such. So just expert. strike strike the last sentence. Yeah. So my recommendation was just to strike the last sentence. Sounds good. Yep. Yeah, it's usually why we try when we write zoning regulations to try to use not use multiple sentences or write paragraphs you know if, if you can as much as you can have a single sentence for a provision um, unless you're really careful yeah have different sub sub provisions to handle just one particular issue yep yeah I mean do you want to break one into two so that proposed developments becomes uh, I, item number two or does that not matter? I don't know what I would recommend for the parking plan or the sign plan. I think I would just follow what's going on above. Proposed development requiring major site plan shall occur within five years. Okay. Either way, it has to be consistent with the master plan. Yeah. And we, we will probably revisit this at some point as we work through it. Um, I'm just not, you know, you try to think about when, you know, that, that says major site plan shall occur within five years or such approval shall expire. It really is silent on what happens with a minor. Hmm. Site plan is minor site plan follow the. I would think a minor site plan would follow the general rules and would have to be built within one year. And it probably doesn't matter because they're administrative anyways. So you can come in and get that permit over again if you get a minor a permit for a minor development, minor site plan change, and you don't build it in two years. Well, you just come back and get another permit. It's not going to be that onerous. And I think the major site plan just gives a broader window when the campus is doing some major upgrades because sometimes you can't do all your upgrades in a in a short period of time when you're building a campus sure so sounds good okay so we're gonna have to come back to number 84 briefly i think that that was a good catch five i thought we were yeah let's see if there's anything else Yeah, I'm sorry, because I, I actually had that printed out and sitting on my desk downstairs because I figured at some point we were going to want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, Seems like we've had trouble with that before, trying to define what was a change of use and what wasn't. So it would be good to have a definition. Yeah, I've, I've written them before for other communities, so I, I had one that I kind of worked and I thought it was going to fit pretty well, but I think it is an important definition that we should probably review. Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind distributing that by email? Yep. Um, when you when you get back to work and we can that way we shouldn't reply. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we can all consider it on our own and then talk about it at the next meeting quickly. Anything else on this? Okay. Well we should talk about um I mean the next 
item on the agenda is the up adoption process. But before we get into those specifics, let's talk about Kirby's memos. Uh, do we want to have a, a, a motion on the consent, or are we just assuming that everybody else is good because it was a consent item? Uh, we are assuming everyone else is good because it was a consent item and everyone was duly warned as okay. such. Um, but I don't think we're ready to mo make a motion to pass on this packet yet until we discuss number 84, which is the change of use definition. Yep, and I have a couple others for anyone who's looked up, uh, up above whatever 59. There were a couple of yellow areas where staff was going to develop a map or staff was going to develop painting studio definition. So I think there were a couple of them that yeah i i had work to do there weren't decisions you guys had to do there was just some work i had to do so i've got to put some stuff together to get those to you anyways okay we can consider all of those at the next meeting and then hopefully with those approved or modified and approved we can then pass on a whole packet to sounds like Council. a plan okay so which ones are we excluding right now we're excluding 62 and 80. Well, I mean, we made decisions on all of them except for 84, um, and some of the decisions were to just hold off. Yeah. So but, oh, I don't, okay. I don't know the best way to go through it, and. Well, that was. I just think it'd be good, helpful to identify the ones that we're holding off on. So otherwise, if we pass all of these, then it sounds as if we have approved the ones that are still in flux as well. So. 62 was one of them. Okay, so no, we need we need work from um, Mike on numbers 15, 18, um, 62 we were going to do in the context of the city plan. Right, yes. right. That's that's just saying. Hold off. Oh, yeah. oh, just that we're going to note oh, okay. that we're going to hold off on it. Right, okay. And so for that it was 62, and I didn't make a note because I figured this. Four, which is the one you just brought up about change of use, and then. 125. 125. <coughs> 15 and 18, too, Leslie? Is that what? Yeah, that one, staff should develop map, develop new painting studio use. Oh, yes. And that's all I can minutes. see offhand, okay. but... Okay, good. Our resolution to the painting studio issue was to try to define it. Is that what you're saying, Mike? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. there would be a new use for painting studio. Otherwise, all of the art studios will be light manufacturing. <laughs> So I just needed to come up with a definition for painting studio, and then and then to insert it onto figure two fifteen, which is <laughs> okay. Yeah, that just sounds tricky. <laughs> very defined. <laughs> very subjective. What? What is it? When have you crossed the line out of painting studio? When does it become sculpture? Yeah. Well, we just need to make sure that we figure out how they could be, art studios be allowed, because right yeah. now they're mm -hmm. apparently not allowed. The art studios fall under light manufacturing, and the term art can be so broad, um, you know, anyone can consider themselves an artist from, you know, giant metal sculptures to musicians to, right. you know, there's, uh, there's different a lot medium. of things that somebody could say. It's well, you know, I'm, a, I'm an artist doing performing my art, and it's not always visual arts or paintings or you know it could be, you know, is is a dance studio an art studio? Is you know, so it was just a matter of coming up with how we would classify something because we did actually have applications for somebody who wanted to have a painting studio, and we didn't know. We could have just made them all light manufacturing and said that's the way it's going to be, um, or we could break it out to something new. So this is where you ended up landing on, which was to create a painting studio and all other art studios would be under light manufacturing. We can revisit that if it seems. Yep, certainly anyone can yeah. can bring that up. We just needed a, you know, as we said, we most of these have come up because of actual applications. And uh, you 
sometimes go scratch your head and say, well, this is the way we're going to have to interpret it because we don't have an alternative and see whether people want to change stuff. Yeah, some of the other ones I think I put in my example here was kilns for potteries, pneumatic drills and polishing for statues, welding for sculptures. Um, so there's quite a few art studios that could actually have a, a significant impact on neighboring uses. Right, yeah. Okay, so we just have five items that we're excluding from our consent agenda, or our consent approval. Well, not all of them were consent approved, just items 56 through 130 minus oh, right. 125 and 84. <laughs> yeah, anything that hasn't 62. been commented on is assumed to be approved at this point. <laughs> just want to be clear. It's noted every other we one actually walked been through. Or not yeah, we walked yeah. through all the other ones. And then. Okay, so let's talk about Kirby's memos. Because you, Which you, I did not bring, actually. you, um, well, we, we kind of discussed how we wanted to do it at the last meeting, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to modify them at all. I did. I sent uh, every. I think I sent. I sent. To the entire group. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Been, I, sent, uh, I sent to the entire group. I think I remember that. <laughs> I, I lose track of what I sent to you and Mike. And I sent everyone, but I sent every, I sent everyone in copies. They were lightly modified versions of what we had talked about before. Broke it out into two memos. Um, uh, didn't you know we haven't done a thorough discussion of the more contentious issue about billable area, so I didn't make any major changes there. Um, Barb had provided a lot of feedback uh, to us the last meeting about mm -hmm. changes she wanted to make there, mm -hmm. and some of the like stuff that's in the like the wordsmithing variety of things that Barb pointed out. I looked at and made change some changes, uh, maybe not all of them, along those lines. But anything substantive, I just tell them off on to see. It's like, do we want to discuss it more or? Um, I mean, like one question is that you know, Barb has a certain vision for it. But the, but the memos from the group, so, I mean, we could spend a lot of time to make to try to get to, like, a place where, if we think it's worthwhile to try to make, make a version that everyone's totally happy with, or we could just well, send it, it with the note that, Is you know, that the Barb intent of the memo or agree. not? Is it to, yeah. to, to, you know, present both sides of the issue and here's why we're doing this? So, um, my recollection of our vote approving the preparation of this memo was not to present two sides, but to provide the city council with a clear um, list or outline, just identifying the the concerns that were were brought up as part of this vote, and that could potentially have an impact that they should be considering as part of their consideration of this change. So um, it wasn't like this was said and this was said and this it was just more like this no, is. I guess I read that as yeah. being the same. Thing. Okay. Um, that yeah, that here are the issues that were brought up. Yeah. And here are the advantages and here are the disadvantages. Right. Yes. Yeah. Clear cut. That's listed as to either statements of fact, or um, yes, you know, um, and trying to keep it as as clear as possible and then to say you know basically it's up to the city council right um, and I thought you gave Kirby some excellent feedback about some of the items that looked a little bit subjective and he made modifications to yeah to, I guess I would say that I didn't that. see the modifications as okay. kind of meeting what I was you know would like to have seen so I suggested to Kirby before the meeting tonight that maybe we could just sit down together because okay. I think it would be a lot faster process mm -hmm. to do this um, in person and say okay how about this how you know and kind of work back and forth with some different verbiage okay rather than send emails ad infinitum is that something that the two of you think you might be able to do before the next meeting um, yeah I'd be happy to but so one thing we're going to run into though is that there'll be things we probably aren't going to agree on that where I think it's a substantive change and and, and I think it's not a message that I would want to send so then what do we so so what so we put both the of them commission in. like us to do there i think we have to put both of them in in a very subjective way do we have an example of that i mean that you've already run um, into that we yeah, could just could discuss take, quickly uh, yeah i could kind of find our comments
Well, like, like there's a, mm -hmm. like a factual statement here where I had said that some residents of Montpelier have voiced uh, disapproval of changes to density limits in the past, and Barb wants to change it to disapproved multiple times of neighborhood densities. And oh. I just, it's a, the tonal change there, I think, mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. sending a, a different message than what I intended to. So, you know, things like uh, that. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think, you know, some of it is certainly an issue of emphasis, but I think, you know, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, for those uh, city councilors who were not here during that process, that they're clear about that this was not just one or two people mm -hmm. and that there was some very significant disagreement with what we were doing. And so what we need to be able yeah. to do is to, to show to the public that this it, change makes sense and will it would, in fact, not significantly alter that. And so in my point of view is that there were some very vocal people, but still compared with the entire population, all the residents of the city, they were still a tiny minority. So I don't want to give a few squeaky wills, that kind of oh, platform. That's yeah. trouble. So, I, you know, yeah. well, I mean, yeah, that, that I, is my view on it yeah. because I because I do view that I want to represent all the residents and not just the well spoken. Certainly. So, so like that balances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I think that one of the things that we continually said to those people, and there became more and more people over time, it wasn't just, you know, one or two people, that, that we said to them, well, you know, we hear your concern. However, we have these other uh, uh, policies in place that would keep our do any development consistent with what's in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that was presented clearly to those people and to everyone. So anyone else who might have dissented might not have come forward because they said, oh, sure. Yeah, but we're getting that. into trouble. When so, we're trying yeah, to, I mean, there's, yeah. there's yeah. all, I mean, not that we're making many major, you know, maybe as big changes, but we're making a lot of changes to zoning and everyone in the city is not necessarily going to be aware that we're, I mean, we're, we're giving, I feel like we're giving a very, you know, uh, expanse, you know, why, which is fair given the contentiousness of this issue, but, you know, the planning commission also voted to move the recommendation forward. So I, I just share the concern about giving the city Enhancing council. the platform of yeah, of, of something that the said, you know, the planning commission by a majority didn't vote for. So I, I don't, and I don't know how to deal with the the differences in tone. That's very complex. <laughs> well, if you, you know, if you don't want to spend any more time on it, then I'm perfectly happy with just writing a dissenting opinion and sending it to the city council. Well, how about this? Why don't we, why don't the two of you sit down, as you suggested, why don't you see if you can come to something and... And I would um, urge you to think about factual corrections that need to be made and identify when you have a stylistic mm -hmm. um, discrepancy uh, <coughs> about the tone or the urgency of some or you know, opinions. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, th this memo is, in is intended to represent that there are multiple opinions. So right. it's not yeah. meant to say this is the one opinion of the city count of the planning commission. It's meant to say that they're. they're this is there are a couple of different opinions this is what the majority chose um but we understand that factually speaking there are some drawbacks to moving forward with this recommendation and so ensuring that those factual drawbacks are adequately and accurately captured that's really important mm -hmm. and, and i think mm -hmm. you are in the best position to do that so that's what i i'm really looking for um and obviously you know, Kirby's a human like anybody else, and, and there can be moments where we've had it in something slightly subjective, and it's helpful to have somebody just check, make sure everything's yeah, let's you know, you know yeah. objective as subjective and, as you know, possible. And the, the the document I distributed in the first place was really a first draft. So, yeah, no, I, mean, I understand. Yeah. So the fact that there's a lot of feedback is totally expected and welcome. Um, yeah. and if ultimately you feel like checking the factual accuracy is not sufficient and you want to have a separate dissenting opinion that has more of the tone that you're looking for, then I mean, you certainly can do that too. So, I mean, I, I think the be the more we can speak with one voice, mm -hmm. the, the better our credibility mm -hmm. as a commission yeah. is. That's why I'm, I'm looking to maintain it if we can. But if we can't, I'm not going to force it. I okay. mean, I think All we right. should have All a right. dissenting opinion if needed. 
All right, so we will meet sure. um, yep. outside and see what we can draft. Okay. Very good. And then we'll, we'll all look at that as, as much as we, as <laughs> we can. Yeah. I think we'll have but a quick discussion about that and we'll move on because we have discussed so it quite a lot. So try and circulate that before the next meeting? Try to circulate it before but, the next meeting. Just give no us a discussion. couple of days. Um, Just no discussion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then, Mike, are there any quick details about the adoption process that you want to discuss? No, when we're when we get there, we'll talk about it. It's it's pretty straightforward. I just wanted to give the 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 new people a chance to ask any questions and to understand the process. But okay. I will go over it uh, the next meeting when we presumably vote to um, start the public hearing process on the changes. Okay. Great. So we'll look at fifteen, eighteen. 84 and Kirby's memo. Six, okay. Is that right? Bob? And 62 and 125 we're holding off on? Yes. Okay. Till the city plan. All right. Yes. So we're not taking any action on those? No action. Right. 15, 18, 84, Kirby's memo. Okay. Kirby's memo is really the Planning Commission's memo, and Kirby has graciously drafted it. I'm just calling it Kirby's memo for ease of reference. <laughs> this is fine. Okay. Um, so that brings us to item nine, which is the minutes from December 10th and January 14th. So first, let's look at December 10th, meeting, min meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve these minutes? We could discuss. Can we make sure that it's just changed before we even take any action on it? Did okay. this get changed, Mike? Didn't make a strikeout version, but the the minutes are changed on page. It's on the back. I don't have them in front of me. Yeah. Page two. If I can open them up. No, I just mean was it corrected from the original December tenth that we. Had. Yes, I was okay. asked to review the video to make sure that the minutes were accurate, and they they were. They just had some omissions of some stuff, so I added in some clarifications on the back. So hopefully it's a little bit more accurate as to what we decided on. Yeah. I think there's just confusion about what the vote was on. Yeah. The motion passed in a 5 0 vote with Aaron <laughs> abstaining. That, um, The engineered and sloped section would be forwarded. So is that what we voted on? Mm. Yes. Yes. And we didn't vote on the buildable areas question? Correct. That's why we're working on the memo. But we did vote on it a couple of times. I guess we just didn't have an official vote on this date. If you reviewed the video, then I trust you. But I. Yeah, what, what happened on the 10th was we... We needed to, there, there was, it seemed as though we were starting to move towards decision on December 10th that said, well, we'll just wait till January 14th or whatever it was that we, for, for the next meeting to approve the memo for these other pieces. And I made a suggestion that said, well, why don't we just take the buildable area out, move forward the slopes and move forward the landscaping so we can get those two approved by city council and we'll save the buildable area piece for the long adoption process and then in the interim kirby was going to build the memo which would go with that long adoption process but it wasn't going to hold up 
the landscaping, which we really needed to get fixed. So maybe we, I think maybe Kirby's memo identifies a vote on this date, so maybe it could be corrected to a straw That's poll. That's what I'm going to have to do. Or, I, yeah. What I'm thinking is that if we're going to discuss the memo, we should just vote then. <coughs> mm-hmm. And that will be the, big, <coughs> the yep. issue. If we didn't have an actual I mean, vote. I, I really thought that on the 10th we had two votes, but um, I mean, it doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. We can vote next time, and, mm -hmm. and, and I'll... Yeah, if it didn't happen then. Reflect that mm -hmm. date, even though it's the future. in the future. Yeah, we had a motion in the second. We never technically withdrew it. We also never technically like voted on the first one and then ended up voting on the second one. No, I usually try to pay attention to that, but okay. And I think that was where we, we missed it, and that's what confused uh, Tam doing the minutes. With yep. Well, fair enough. Do I have a motion to approve the meeting meeting minutes from December 10th? So moved. All Press. second. All those, any discussion, <coughs> further discussion? No, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, and I'll vote aye, since I have to vote right now. Um, okay, December 10th meeting minutes are approved. Let's turn quickly to January 14th meeting minutes. <coughs> Do I have a motion to approve these minutes? Okay. Do I have a second? No second. Okay. Any discussion? Barb, you ready for a vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Eight <coughs> minutes from January 14th are approved. Okay. So. Next meeting, we're going to start with, before we adjourn, I just want to sum up what we're going to start with. We're going to take up the last of the matrix, numbers 15, 18, 84. We're going to also vote on the buildable area question, which I don't know what number it is offhand, but I'll find it. <laughs> and well, we voted on that already. It was just right. the memo that was going to go. It's voted on 5-1 multiple times. Okay. Well, it, I'll was, review, but it wasn't on the tenth. I I'll guess. review my my notes about that yeah. and see what I can find. We'll just we'll vote next time just for the sake of the memo. Yeah. That's that's what we were talking about. And then we'll about. vote for the sake of the memo. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And we are adjourned. We'll see you on February eleventh.